Do you think Nvidia would do well to offer both 8 and 16 gigabyte versions of the RTX 4060 like they did with the GTX 1060? So back in the day, that was yeah. What six was that? Was three that a gig? Forty dollar difference or fifty dollar difference? Was it, I think was it was two hundred dollars and two fifty. Yeah, I believe that was right. Of course, those two cards also had different performance, so it wasn't just a straight three versus six gig. You did get fewer CUDA cores, I believe, and a cut down memory bus. You did a very. It was like eight percent reduction or something like that. Maybe not cut down memory bus, but there were it, were, it was typical Nvidia fashion. It wasn't just eight or sixteen. Gig ver- no, that's right. There. It was yeah, there was there was differences there for sure. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it'd be good if they did that, especially if let's just put it out there. I'm just making up numbers. Let's say the the eight gigabyte model was five hundred dollars. Um, Forty sixty. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> let's say four hundred dollars. Sorry, sorry. Oh, even four hundred. Okay. Well, uh, but it's gonna be. It's not gonna be below four hundred. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not going to be right. Four hundred is it? Let's not get people's hopes up. But I'm just putting out random numbers, Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to see. I just see people instantly dying in the comments yep. when you say, "Oh, 4060, Let's throw out a price five hundred. That sounds I, all right." I, I, right? Meant, I meant to say four hundred, and I'm not going to say three hundred because although I think it should be three hundred, ain't no way. Yeah, especially not for a sixteen gig version. But yeah, but but I would love to be proven wrong on that. Nothing would yeah. make me happier. But to get on with it, four hundred dollars for the eight gigabyte model, four fifty for the sixteen gigabyte model, which is. Again, mm-hmm. what we saw for a doubling of VRAM, historically, whether it was four to eight, three to six, whatever, it was usually only yeah. a fifty dollar difference. Which, especially if it uses GDDR six instead of six X, which is more expensive, yep. which I think is probably going to be the case for a forty sixty type product. Then it's definitely feasible because um, the memory doesn't cost that much. They'd still be making a profit on yeah, exactly like a larger profit on the like sixteen gig card. The Intel Arc products again, they have an eight and sixteen gig version that's about fifty dollars apart that uses G six memory. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense that they can af- afford to do that. And even when they offered it for a fifty dollar price difference, based on memory prices, they should still be making more profit from the the sixteen gig version. Um, because the memory price is a bit less than the price difference. Yep. So I think, yeah, that that would work. But the question is whether they would do it. Because there's, so, there's segmentation reasons, right? They want to encourage you to spend that bit more to consider VRAM and things. In well, that yes. So would that work for NVIDIA? Uh, probably not. It would work for gamers. I'm not sure it would probably work. Great for, for gamers. <laughs> it'd be yeah. great for gamers. We would heavily recommend you spend the extra $50 to get the 16 gigabyte model because you better take advantage of larger texture packs. Games will look much better moving forward. Not just about ray tracing. It's more about higher quality textures, which again, in a few years, the a 16 gig texture pack compared to an 8 gigabyte texture pack will have a significant difference on the presentation if there is even an 8 gigabyte texture pack that is usable. Might be like a Resident Evil 4 type situation. Uh, but they're not going to do it because as Tim's said they they want a 4070 Ti slash RTX 4080 upsell type thing. And they also have their professional line of GPUs as well, where that's where they really want to sting you for the extra VRAM. Because the professionals can go out and they can buy a 4060 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM 3D modeling. That's a cracking good deal. They're not going to spend thousands of dollars on mm-hmm. a professional grade GPU for that because you can use Blender with those GPUs. So a yeah. 40, 60, 16 gigabyte card would become the ultimate value, you know, bang for your buck, Blender 3D modeling for complex models type product. So that's why they're not going to do it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you could make a, uh, a point that maybe the professional card should have even more than 16 gig of VRAM because... Well, the entry level that, ones, they have, yeah. they have up to like yeah, 48 at the moment, but you've got to pay yeah. like nearly $4,000 yeah, US crazy. for that. So I think it, this sort of discussion about like 8 versus 16 kind of shows a lack of foresight from NVIDIA's part on sort of like if a 4060 is limited to either 8 or 16 gig options, they probably should have considered changing the memory bus spec to use a different size memory bus. So if it's like 128 versus 192, moving to 192 would have opened the door for a 12 gig version that sits nicely in between those two things and potentially doesn't cannibalize their more entry-level workstation cards that could have, a, again, a different configuration offering 16 gig of memory. So by sort of limiting, they've kind of forced themselves into this position where the lower tier cards almost are guaranteed to have 8 gig of memory because they just won't have the memory bus to support a different configuration. Yeah, I, I don't think it's an accident. Though. I don't think they've forced themselves into going, oh, whoopsie, now we've screwed ourselves. I think they're like, yes, this was very calculated and has worked perfectly. Yeah. If, I, if, 
Like, I think the discussion is changing a little bit in that I think they were hoping that consumers weren't going to be as aware of the yeah. issues as they oh, are definitely, now. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Like in the previous gen, 8 gig was sort of talked about as being on the edge, but there are a lot of outlets and reviewers that didn't really mention the VRAM difference or didn't really consider it because it was considered fine at the time. Mm-hmm. And I think they were sort of hoping that, you know, maybe we weren't so- going to see some of the Hogwarts Legacy examples because, you know, the specs of this card would have been set in stone a-, a long time ago, well before some of these more recent examples have come out. Mm. And now that there's this whole VRAM discussion about games needing more VRAM, I think they're they're in a more precarious position than they probably would have liked. They would have liked to sail through with an eight gig card and hope that people will buy it and then be forced into upgrades or I think that's true, but I also don't know how aware sort of mainstream gamers that's true. are. Yeah, yeah. And also there's a there's it seems to be there's just as many people perhaps they're more fans of NVIDIA, but there seems to be a lot of people defending eight gigabyte cards and sort of attacking our opinion on the subject and saying eight gigabytes is fine where, mm-hmm. you know, There's the game developer's fault rather than the fault of well, not having a VRAM or whatever the argument it's is. It's ev- yeah. everyone else's fault but NVIDIA's. Uh, so, yeah, I, I... But I agree with what you've said. I, I yeah. yeah. It's all solved by competition anyway. We can talk about eight gig being insufficient or whatever, but if AMD comes out with their card at the same price that has eight gig of memory, well, it doesn't it's like, matter what then. do you do? Yeah, you're stuffed. Whereas, you know, there's obviously that opportunity there for different VRAMs to be a, diff- a, a quite a key selling point in that sort of price tier. So we'll just have to wait and see what they do. But yeah, mm. I, I agree with a lot of your points. I don't think they would be, I don't think they'll make a 16 gig version. If anything, I think I was talking to you about this a few weeks ago. Maybe we'll see in a year's time like a, a super refresh of these products that you know increases clocks and CUDA cores a little bit, but then doubles the VRAM across all the models. Yeah, and I laughed at you. <laughs> this would be a good upsell for them. but yeah, yeah, There's no way they'll do it. No, they won't. Uh, again, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, because it's a win-win for... This is all a win-win for NVIDIA because they get to, they get to give people who buy some of the lower and cheaper cards less VRAM than they need in our opinion... And what that means is they're instead of holding on to their card for three or four generations, or two or three generations, let's say, they find that the very next generation they've got to upgrade again because they're like, well, I paid, let's say, four hundred dollars for my eight gigabyte yeah. card in 2023, 2024, 2025. I can now get twelve. It may even be some sort of minuscule upgrade, but it'll allow me to play the latest games now. So I'll spend another four hundred dollars and get that, which is essentially what thirty seventy well thirty seventy Ti owners in particular will be facing. If you've got a thirty seventy Ti, you're really looking at getting the twelve gigabytes of VRAM. I've heard from a lot of thirty seventy thirty seventy Ti owners that are having problems in like Halo Infinite and stuff like that, where they play for half an hour and on a like ultra quality settings or something. And it plays really nice, great frame rates, and then the VRAM buffer starts to fill up and you start getting stuttering and the frame rate just degrades. Quite a few of you have told me that. I, I haven't seen it firsthand because I haven't played that much Halo Infinite, but yeah, yeah, a lot of games are seeing that. So NVIDIA, you, you, you come back to NVIDIA uh, more regularly to spend more money on new products, and then they get to still sell that silicon with twice as much VRAM to the professional grade market for more than, well, twice the price. Because yep. what, uh, uh, as I, in a recent video we just released, so you could buy an RTX 3070 with eight gigabytes of VRAM for five hundred dollars US, or you could spend twice as much for the same silicon uh, with an A4000 and get sixteen gigabytes of VRAM. So they're selling big s- upsell. <laughs> yeah, they're selling you the same. So instead of it being fifty dollars more in the scenario we've just laid out, they're getting five hundred dollars more in that one. Yeah, yeah exactly. So why would Nvidia change? Yeah, and I think as well, like... Great business model for them. I think they've learned a lesson from the Pascal era being too good. Mm. A lot of people still have held on to cards like 1070, 1060, 1080 for a long time. I imagine a lot of those people have now upgraded, but that series was released, what, like six years ago? And Mm -hmm. it had extreme longevity. Mm -hmm. And it made a lot of people think twice about upgrading to 20 series. And so they, they wanted to avoid a repeat of that yeah. situation. Which it, it, and, and again, this is all down to there being a lack of competition. When there's no competition, NVIDIA can just do whatever they want. People will be like, yeah, I'll, I'll upgrade every generation now. That's just the, the reality. Was if there's a competitor that is offering better longevity, that becomes a key issue for NVIDIA and something they have to respond to. Whereas right now, they don't really have to do that as much. Yeah, they've sort of compete with themselves. So if yep. gamers are aware that, you know, Game developers are saying you need this much VRAM. We're not 
you know, NVIDIA is not giving you that much VRAM, so we're struggling mm-hmm. to make games the way we want to make them. There could be a bigger leap forward in game development, but we're being held back. And gamers are like, yeah, why have we had eight gigabytes of VRAM at this price tag now for, you know, that many years? We want more. Um, we're not going to buy your products until you start giving us what we want. And until that start ha- starts happening, which is sort of what our series has been about, is getting gamers to demand more from NVIDIA and even AMD, then, yeah, mm-hmm. games aren't going to get right. And we sort of got to this point now where the game developers are like, well, you know, the new console generation is well and truly established now. We've got these new game engines. We're just moving forward regardless. Um, it's, it's kind of a funny situation where people are like, well, they can't do that, though. They can't leave 8 gigabyte you know, owners behind because we're the majority of the market. And it's just, it's kind of like the quad core thing with CPUs. It went on for so long, that stagnation yeah. of just quad core, quad core, quad core at the mainstream that it started to get to the point where, yeah, the quad cores were struggling to play the games because they were starting to use yeah. all, all the CPU up. But also it's like the percentage of people with eight gig GPUs versus the percentage of people with the PS5 is like drastically different. Yes. So, you know, the, that's the, true. They're designing these games for the consoles which sell significantly more games yep. and there's a much bigger install base there so that's why they're doing that it's not like they're sitting there going hey we want to screw over all the eight gig owners it's more no. they've been for years accommodating them yeah and now they've got to the point where as you've sort of said the thing with vram um which it seems like reading of the comments a lot of people don't seem to understand is they've spent and game developers have said this this isn't me you know making assumptions or they're you know, pretending they've said this like game developers have said this it's been a huge development cost to them to make their games fit within an 8 gigabyte VRAM buffer so it works on your RTX 3070 or slower at like high to ultra quality settings or even medium. And they've got to the point now where they're just spilling over that. It's going to like 9 gigabytes. It's not like games have all of a sudden, you know, I know we've got The Last of Us Part 1 where it you know, starts using a lot more VRAM. Though they've, they've managed to cut that down a bit, but it's still like you know 10 gigabytes at 1080p ultra or whatever. We're just going to see more of that, um, and they're, they're not—they're yeah. not necessarily spilling over miles like what we sort of see in Hogwarts Legacy with ray tracing enabled. Um, though I think with ray tracing enabled, a lot of these games it's going to push it over. Like a Plague Tale Requiem, great looking game, a lot of people have praised it for how it looks. But you enable ray tracing and blows past eight gigabytes at you know yeah. 1080p with the second highest quality preset. So you're just going to see a lot more of that, and that's that's sort of why we've been ringing the alarm bell on this whole eight gigabyte VRAM thing, and it. Again, to come full circle on this, if you've got like a lower end GPU and you're used to like, you're like, oh, I paid $200, $300 for this a year ago. I'm used to sort of medium to low type quality settings. Those cards will still be fine. Like we're not saying 8 gigabyte VRAM cards are dead and can't be used. It's just if you spent $600 US on what you thought was a pretty high end top tier graphics card, it's in a very short period of time, especially if you bought one like, well, any time in the last year. You've gone from having what you thought was a pretty high-end RTX 3070 Ti to what's like now a pretty low-end RTX 3050 type card. And you can't use ray tracing in like a Plague Tale Requiem. You just can't do it. It doesn't work. Yeah, I think we are starting to see some consumer pushback. There's definitely pushback on pricing at the moment. Mm -hmm. People, you know, the 3070 flew off shelves, 4070 sitting around on shelves. So there's definitely pushback, at least from that side of things. That's a very obvious sort of issue. You know, people can say, oh, that's way too expensive. It's very obvious. The VRAM thing, you know, that's going to, it's going to take more real world use cases of people running into that problem and sort of that'll slowly filter through. Mm -hmm. So I think there's definitely an opportunity that, yeah, even without competition, as you say, you know, NVIDIA is competing with themselves, that there will be some, some pushback on that. But Again, it would be very easily solved with with a really strong opposition card that had that sort of VRAM issue solved. So, yeah. What was this question about? 8 versus 16 on the one card? I've forgotten. Yeah, who knows? We just love talking about VRAM at the moment, don't we? Let's go to the next question. It'll almost certainly be about VRAM. Yeah. 